Today, before we start, because we have a new unit to get to, but before that, I wanted to follow up on my promise of finding the density of the natural number. So what does it mean for an infinite set to be dense? Well, essentially, I'm going to write a formal definition, I think. So for all x in the real number, x and x naught in the real numbers, there exists some number c in the one that will prove it for us, the rationals, but it's going to be in general, such that mm, x minus x naught is less than c is less than x plus x naught. What that essentially means that if we have x, uh, uh, we can find any instance of something in our set that's any distance we want away from x. So I'm going to prove this for the rational numbers really quickly. So we have two real numbers, a and b. And what we're going to do is take some integer n, so this is in z, and multiply a and b by them. It's going to be the positive integers because there's no use for the negative ones. So might as well put the natural numbers even. So we take n times a and then n times b. So what is n going to be? Well, n is going to be some number such that it is greater than 1 minus b over a. Why is that? Well, we want the, distance, the difference between nb and na to be greater than 1. So that's why we have this. Why do we want this to be greater than 1? So we can find at least one integer in it. We're going to call the smallest integer in this interval m. Such that na is less than m is less than nb. Then once we divide both sides by n, we get a is less than m over n is less than b. m is in the integers, and n is in the natural numbers, which are a subset of the in integers. So since it's an integer divided by an integer, m over n is rational. So all we have to do is replace a with x minus x naught and b with x plus x naught. And that's not that hard because x and x naught are two arbitrary numbers, just like a and b. So yeah, that's that. So now let's get to the actual meat of the lesson today, cardinality. This was just a side quest. So what is cardinality? Well, for finite sets, it's quite easy to define. So like a equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It should be pretty easy to figure out that the cardinality, which is essentially the size, just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 elements, so we write down 6. But what about infinite sets, like the natural numbers, for example? So the natural numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4, dot, dot, dot. So what would you write? I'm sure some of you out there would choose to write the magnitude of n is infinity, but actually that would be wrong, right? Because what if we took n and then... We unioned it with, and by the way, before you call me out for not using zero, our textbook doesn't put zero in the natural numbers either. Let's put something in the rational numbers here. Like, for instance, 1.1. So n union 1.1 is the cardinality of that. Now, infinity plus 1, what does that even mean? This is meaningless. What's the meaning of infinity if suddenly you can add things to it in hookah bazooka? It's a new biggest number. So, instead, what we're going to do is, uh, uh, my teacher gave me this good analogy of back when they didn't use numbers in ancient Mesopotamia, farmers would count who had more sheep in this way. So, they would line up all their sheep, so just like this. Let's say farmer A had three sheep. So, he line up sheep number one, sheep number two, and sheet number three, and let's say the sheep size keep getting uh, fattest to slimmest, and let's say farmer B only had two sheep, but they didn't have numbers to count how many sheep there were. 
So what do they do? Well, they just line up their sheep until one of them runs out. At that point, one of them? until one of them runs out of sheep. At that point, we know who has more sheep. So, in the same vein, I was actually thinking of uh, them killing each sheep one by one until one of them had some left. But uh, similar strategy, different execution. We want to keep all our sheep, right? So, what we're going to do is we're going to see we can get a one-to-one -one pairing between each element of each set. And then we'll see, uh, we'll be okay. So, let's write down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, do, do, do. Okay. And now we can put 1.1. 1 .1. The proof is similar, but just for ease of understanding, I'm going to put 0 because it's part of the integers. So then we get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now, the more astute of you might say, well, this one starts at 1 an iteration later than this one, so obviously we know which one's going to run out first. Now, let me ask you this. When does it run out? So, when this first set of the natural numbers runs out, what is the natural numbers union 0 up to? That's right. Think about the relationship between these two. This is n minus 1. This is n minus 1. This is n minus 1. When you graph n minus 1 on the xy axis, or rather y equals x minus 1, does it ever run out? Like, does the graph ever just stop? No. Yeah. So, neither of these run out. But wait a second. Neither of these run out, and we can form this one-to-one -one correspondence. This likely had a one-to-one -one correspondence with sheep. Let's say... Uh, one of mommy sheep loves the daddy sheep very much, another one is produced. So let's say we have sheep number three, this time with an abnormally large head. Now, these two farmers have the same amount of sheep because they can match each other up in a one-to-one -one pairing. In the same way, we can match these sets up with a one-to-one -one pairing. So, what does that mean? Okay, if these farmers can pair up their sheep just like this, what does that mean, one-to-one? -one? So what does that mean about their amounts of sheep each? They have a commonality. Okay, now what about this? They have commonality. But isn't that crazy? Because if I took a finite set, like one, two, three, the cardinality of that would obviously be 3, but then the cardinality of that union 0 is 4, because now we have 4 elements. So isn't it crazy that when we add 1 to this infinite set, it stays the same? But that's just the nature of infinite sets. Now, let me show you something crazy. We can match up the natural numbers with the integers. What do you think about that? Crazy, right? Yeah. Because theoretically, the integers, yeah, the integers have more than twice the amount of natural numbers because the natural numbers are just one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. While uh, the integers are dot 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 minus one, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you have this entire section which is just as big, if not bigger, than the real numbers. So wouldn't that mean that at least we would have the cardinality of z is two times the cardinality of n? What do you think? Yeah, I totally agree. That's why math doesn't make sense. Okay. Well, let's see if we can match them up. So we have we have one, and then what? What should we start with? Minus Zero. Two. Hey, wait a second. That's the exact same thing one of my classmates said. Oh, did you? Yeah. Zero was the most convenient place. Minus three was just a random thing they said. So zero, one, 
minus 1, 2 minus 2, because otherwise we can't include the negative numbers, and then we're the same situation as this. 6 minus oh, 6, 3, 7 minus 3. And you can see this easy correspondence between the even natural numbers. So we have f of n is equal to 1 half n when n is even. And what about when n is odd? Well, we get from 3 to minus 1, 5 to minus 2, 7 to minus 3. So it's like you're subtracting 1 and then dividing by minus 2. 5 minus 1 over minus 2, minus 2, etc., so on and so forth. So we want to write 1 minus n over 2. Or maybe 1 over 2 minus 1 over 2n if n is odd. So then, what are the conditions for this function? Well, it has to be one-to-one -one in specific. If the baby sheep suddenly dies of, like, I don't know, malaria or something. I know sheep can catch malaria. Some of you buy all of this in the comments. Please tell me that. So, if one of these sheep dies, we no longer have a one-to-one -one relation. Does that mean that Farmer A can, uh, Farmer B can magically match up <clears throat> this sheep to Farmer A and say, ha ha, now I've got the same amount of sheep as you. No, he can't. It has to be a one-to-one -one relation. But what do we call this? This is when there's two different inputs map to the same output. Like, for example, in y equals x squared, you have two different inputs mapping to the same output. So, our little function has to pass the horizontal line test. But that's just one condition. That's what we call being injective. I.e., putting in one input always gives you one unique output. Or, in other words, uh, uh, for every output B, so like for every X in the range or codomain B, for all x in the codomain B, there exists exactly one, let's see, what symbols did I use? Y, wait, for all y and b, there exists exactly one x and a such that f of x equals y if we are mapping f from A to B. So, one input, one output. One input, one unique output. Now, surjective works... Yeah, here you can't have two inputs in the same output. That just isn't injective anymore, so it's not one-to-one. -one. And in the same way, it has to be surjective, which is essentially the other way around, B comparing the sheep to A. So, essentially, what we should write is, let me just take a look at my notebook to make sure I'm doing everything correctly. Yep. Okay. So, wait. Oh, oops. Looks like I accidentally switched up injective with surjective. This is the definition of surjective. Injective essentially means that if we have A1 and A2, which are both in our domain, and then we have their outputs, which are in our codomain, then if A1 is not equal to A2, then F of A1 is no longer equal to F of A2. So, that's how we can get this one-to-one -one relation. We can stop B from stealing A C. So, in the same way, that's how we can do these things. So, now, we've shown that the naturals are congruent. Well, uh, they have the same cardinality as the naturals union, zero. And those have the same cardinality as the integers. Now, let me tell you something crazy. They also have the same cardinality as the rationals. 
But that's crazy, right? The rationals are literally two integers on top of one another. It'd be like the integer squared or something. And we'll actually get to that next time. So, what do you think? Does the, do the naturals have the same cardinality as the reals? Uh, no. Why? Reals is bigger in sense and also please keep the place all the natural numbers. Okay, then let me give you a riddle. So, 0 to 1, so all the real numbers in between 0 to 1. Is this congruent to the reals? Yes. How do you know? I guess that's why nobody likes math. Math is a shaky I think, foundation. I think you still remember all your results from set theory, from your set theory class, but you don't remember how to prove them I anymore. Think math will collapse one day. Blah, 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 blah. You're going to find some hole in the math. Yeah, right.